Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to record a short video for you just to introduce next week. Uh, you will be happy to see that next week isn't a discussion uh, initial post week. Uh, there will be a discussion that I hope will uh, be instigated by each of the groups, but there are no requirements to do an initial post. That will not be graded. But uh, your ongoing participation from week to week in the discussions is part of your final participation marks. So it would be a good idea to check in, um, to do the readings, and then to check in with your group and to maybe um, start some conversation, ask some questions, explore some some uh, some thoughts, co uh, have your group help you with some some issues or controversies that you see around ethical research. Whatever whatever way direction that you choose your discussion to go, go ahead and do it. There aren't any restrictions around that, but it is a good idea to be a, a part of uh, the discussion at least a little bit next week. So other than that, after this week's pretty intense readings and discussions, I hope that you'll be able to have just a little bit of a breather in this course and get caught up on your other courses and get caught up on life and uh, work ahead for the week after, which is also a fairly intense week. So just to go to a, a couple of things to note for this week. First of all, I'll talk about the ethics assignment. So that assignment is due on September 30th, so you still have a couple of weeks to complete that. Some of you may have already completed this ethics tutorial. It's uh, it's a tutorial by the Government of Canada and when you go through each of the modules it shows that you've completed the modules and then it issues you a PDF certificate at the end. So if you already have completed the modules and you have a login you just need to screenshot that. I don't care if you did it a year ago or two years ago if you've done it already you don't have to redo it. So as long as it's uh, the you know as long as you can uh, provide the screenshot that I'm looking for. So in the assignment details, as you can see here, you have to first log in and create an account in this TCPS2 core. There's a login welcome. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, yeah, let me just get onto it here and show you what it looks like. There is a place that you first log in and create an account, and you can create an account here as a student of the University of Alberta. So use your U of, a, U of A email account right here. Sorry, create a new account here. And you will be selecting that you are a graduate student and your affiliation is going to be the University of Alberta. And then as I said, use your U Alberta email account. And then it will take you to the screen where you can start completing the modules. The modules you can go through as slowly or as quickly as you like. And if you've already started in on it or have done it before, you will note that you can get away with reading almost nothing through the tutorial. So I'll just tell you that right now that I know that because I've gone through it. And it doesn't require you to do too much to continue on through each screen. There's a few times that you have to stop and you have to answer a question or you have to select a certain answer or read a certain passage. But other than that, you can fly through it pretty quickly. You know, as graduate students, this is something I think it, that is really important for you to, to know, to be knowledgeable about, is the, the whole ethics process that exists in research in Canada in particular, and fairly universally, but this is a, you know, a Canadian uh, tutorial. It's important for you to know that process and for understand the terminology around ethics and not only as a as a researcher and what are the considerations of ethical research but also as a participant in doing research and also as a digester of other studies and where you you need to consider what sort of ethical boundaries that they've created around their study to protect the participants to ensure the integrity of the study itself so overall, it's information that you need to know. So absorb what you can uh, through, the, through the eight modules, or however many modules there are. Seven, seven modules, eight modules, because there's a review. When you submit, when you finish it, what I want you to submit is not the PDF certificate. I need you to submit a screenshot that looks exactly like 
what is up on my screen right now. That includes your name and the core modules and it'll say review at the end, which really means completed. So this is the screenshot that you submit as your assignment. That is all you need to do. You don't need to post any additional information to me or include the PDF certificate. I just need to know that you've completed each of the modules. That's the ethics assignment that's due on September 30th. Pretty easy stuff, but it's a good exercise and I can't imagine any graduate student going through grad studies, essentially graduating with a master's degree without some background and some sort of uh, certificate or acknowledgement that you've gone through the ethics uh, training. In addition to that, there, is, there are three readings, assigned readings, that you can use to, your discussion can stem from those readings or they can stem from doing the tutorial or they can stem from your own experiences with ethical research or observations about ethical research. So uh, the I found the Cosby reading to be the most interesting. The Prysol is really like an encyclopedic entry that's part of that SAGE research method. So it introduces you to some broader North American terms regarding ethic ethics and research. And excuse me, the Williamson Cursed one is also sort of uh, textbooky in talking about research methods and ethics and research. One thing I wanted to point out was that you might be interested in pursuing because it helps to contextualize some of these terms and some of the reasons that we have, I guess, rules in place or guidelines in place for ethics and research. Cosby refers to an experiment called the Milgram experiment. And the Milgram experiment on obedience was conducted back in the 60s and 70s by a psychologist who wanted to study and understand how people responded to authority uh, and their obedience to an authority figure. There is, so that reading talks about it, but there is a really good video summary that you can Google and find, which is under the Khan Academy website which is a fantastic website actually. I've used it for my research methods class at, at McEwen. And there's a video on the Milgram experiment on obedience, which you may, you may have actually heard about. It's one of those, you know, tried and true examples of questions of ethics and research and psychology and, and that sort of thing. And it explains how the research was carried out and in fact, uh, that uh, the participant was deceived in thinking that they were administering electrical shocks to a person in another room, when in fact they weren't. The person in the other room was, part, was a confederate or part of the scientific experiment. But Milgram wanted to study how far would a person go to obey authority, even if it meant harm to another person and the results were quite shocking how many people actually would go all the way to shocking to the highest level even to the point of the person in the other room supposedly passed out or worse they would keep administering the shocks because they were told told to there's a lot of psychological uh, you know fit, um, I guess issues that stem from that or, or knowledge I guess that stems from that uh, in terms of uh, people's people's willingness to continue to do something that might be harmful or destructive if they believe that the authority figure is going to take the fall for it and they're not going to be personally responsible they will keep on going things like that so he's saying that it helps to explain behavior in history such as Nazi Germany and the obedience of soldiers etc in in obeying and doing horrendous things as a result but what the article talks about, Cosby, and also what this talks about, in addition, there's a simplypsychology.org that breaks down that Milgram experiment and talks about the ethical issues that resulted. There are certain things that that 
experiment brought up in terms of ethics and research. The right to withdraw was withheld from the participants. They, I mean, they could have just walked out the door, but they didn't really feel that they could because they were told to continue. They had to continue. So that became a big deal with ethics that you have to allow your participants the right to withdraw from your study at any time, no questions asked. The other thing was the harm to the participants. So when they thought that they were administering electrical shocks, what sort of psychological harm resulted from knowing that they could have potentially caused someone's death? Milgram does have a rebuttal to that, and if you read that first article by Cosby, it talks about how he how he talked um, talked to the participants after the fact and did a debriefing. And in fact, there wasn't long-term harm to the participants. Anyway, that's a whole other debate. And also deception. The fact that, and this is the biggest thing, is the fact that the participants did not know that the experiment was rigged. And that deception, deceiving a participant into the purpose of the study is ethically wrong. But there are some circumstances the, uh, the chapter talks about, and you'll read about, where how can an exper experiment continue or how can you find out what it is that you need to know without deception, without deceiving your participant. So maybe one question that you can consider is what could be an alternative to Milgram's methods in order to eliminate these ethical issues? That could be one thing to talk about. So if you wish to center your discussion around the Milgram study and around the ethical issues that it brought up, go ahead. Now, what else do I want to say in the little bit of time that I have left here? In library and information studies, we are not typically studying, I, I'm saying typically, we're typically studying things that involve emotional trauma. We're not usually talking to people about traumatic events from childhood, for example, or things that could bring up a lot of emotional issues. That's, that's kind of a blanket statement. I recognize that's not entirely true. You know, if we're talking people, to people about their reading habits or, you know, the reason that they enter the library or how people do searches, we're not talking about a great deal of harm to participants. It's not really inciting a lot of trauma or emotion. But there are studies, of course, that we do that, that do bring that up. Right now, Dr. Roger and I are doing a study on emotional labor in public library work. We have just collected the data and are just starting to look at the data and the, the survey results and note that a lot of people have things to say about the trauma that they've endured from dealing with very difficult situations as part of their role working in a library. So yes, there is a certain element of harm that can come from that and that just shows the that just showcases the incredible importance of confidentiality and anonymity anonymity with participants because if those participants felt in any way that they could be disclosed for saying something about their workplace then they would not participate so there's a lot of ethical considerations that we need to abide by even if it's not a hugely emotionally traumatic psychological study so ethics is important to pay attention to in LIS research in any discipline. Don't think that we are immune from that just because most of our research tends to be fairly benign in terms of its subject material and its human participant component. I only have about 50 seconds left to go here. So I was going to show you there are a couple of different places um, where you have to go to submit ethics approval. Not you personally, but if you were going to do ethics, the UVA has an extensive ethics website, as does McEwen's. And any undergraduate institution will have that, or any um, you know uh, academic institution will have that ethical application steps that you have to go through, which are very, very extensive. Please enjoy the discussion for this coming week and enjoy a little bit of relaxation, and I hope this helped to introduce what you will be involved in in the next week. I would spend this week getting ahead and getting that tutorial finished if I were you. 
Thanks very much for listening.